Well, hello there, everybody. Here's the lovely Thespi now. Hi, <laughs> I want to just get Christina in. Where is she? She's there. There she is. Oh, wow. Let's just get that angle going. So, this is a post birth update, isn't it? Because we did a um, little video before she came along. Did, and yeah. then we've just got a video. We got one. What was it? Just after she was born? Yep, just after she was born. Literally the first week, yeah. and now we are a month later. So for anyone who hasn't been watching this story, Thespina has spent seven years, most of her 30s trying, and I'm thinking now we've got Meghan Markle at 37, and everyone's saying she's too old, and, and how old she is, and we've had, um, who else? Um, Michelle Obama, and I'm going to address these as separate issues, talking about the fact that she had IVF after a miscarriage. You know, these are very real issues that are affecting women today and what we hear in the media really affects us. But your story's phenomenal because you kind of went from spending all these years trying to have a baby mm. in your 30s to five cycles of failed IVF, as in mm. you, they just didn't work, did yeah. they? They just ne did, did you go through a miscarriage or was it just no, they never no, worked? No, it never worked. Um, we knew that you had low AMH, so low egg reserves, to then your egg reserves going <laughs> up to you then realising that actually you needed some time off from all this mm. trying, you'd kind of had enough, mm. to then your next round after you'd done the Conceive With Ease course with me and a yeah. pregnancy yeah. that, boom, stuck. <laughs> and kind of what I wanted to address today was about how do you, having gone through that many cycles and the kind of bad news that you've had, and it is tragic when things haven't actually worked out the way you want, to then being able to have a positive... Um, a positive expectation you know like even discovering you were pregnant mm. just that moment do you want mm. to just share that moment? yeah no it was just it was amazing I mean to be honest with you it took me almost a few months to almost really believe that it was actually real just because you know even the nurse when she called us up she said are you sitting down so it was just yeah I couldn't really believe it so <laughs> it was amazing just to actually find out and you know when you've been waiting for it for so long when it actually happens it's like is it really happened <laughs> it's but yeah it was lovely the belief, and I mean, I we'd known each other for years because you'd been coming to yoga for years, and you'd been doing some other things as well, hadn't you? Prior to doing the conceive yeah, with these course, done some acupuncture. You'd done yeah. acupuncture. You'd done a, a bit of yoga. You, those were the main done things, weren't they? Sound they're? as well. The that, recently. that was the more recent. Yeah. But the sound was with it when we did conceive with yeah. these, wasn't it? Yeah. So the things that changed was you did some nutritional stuff, stuff um, chemicals. You got things. rid of all the toxic, toxic chemicals, chemicals in your life, um, and, and this is all part of the and course. And try to see be more organic with food and products yeah. as well that I use. So you made small changes that made a big yeah. difference, but yeah. and that kind of chipped away at the 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 things that can really contribute to stress in the body, mm. um, psychological and emotional stress. They're all related. Any kind of stress is related. Hello, everybody who's watching. Um, but to actually get to the point that now you are pregnant, and it's mm. like okay. Obviously, when you've wanted something for so long, there's the fear of it not working out and how you get yourself through the pregnancy. And you've just said you've spent months not quite believing yeah. it. At what point did you believe it? <laughs> at what um, point did... I don't know. It's, yeah, it's even now, sometimes I look at her and I still can't really believe it. Oh. Oh, oh, hello. Sweetheart. Hello. Hi, and sweetheart. what about the fact that in terms of stress in pregnancy, how stressed did you feel? Or how frightened um, did you feel? Not, I wouldn't say, I felt, I mean, I felt a little bit, obviously, sort of stressed, especially the first three, sort of three months. But um, I think after I got past the, th the three months sort of point, I think I was, I think I, I was all right. Because um, I think I'd always sort of known deep down that if I did get pregnant, I would keep it. You knew it would stick. So I knew it would stick. So yeah. I wasn't, I don't know why, I can't even explain why, but I just knew it. So It was a deep knowing. Yeah. Yeah. so um but yeah i mean obviously i was just a bit kind of extra cautious with everything that i did you know my driving with you know kind of with my general life and what i ate and you know i was a bit sort of obviously a bit more a lot more careful than i normally would be but and then i look i love their spinner story now their spinner and i have a sort of greek background in common and greeks are very fear-driven very anxious beings <laughs> sorry anyone else who's greek i don't know many calm greeks so there are always the exception to the rules <laughs> hello courtney um but the thing i wanted to touch base on today was the fact that you know we know stress is is very challenging to getting pregnant in the first mm. place we also know that it can really cause complications oh. in pregnancy but it's normal part of life being stressed and exactly. so it's learning how to manage things that's so important 
Hello, Christina. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello, Christina. Oh, <laughs> we'll all queue over the baby. So, yeah, the, you know, the thing that I think is so important about you is it was about just making the small changes that made the big mm. difference. It wasn't about never being frightened, no. never being stressed, no. and neither changing your culture completely. And I think sort of as well the whole belief, I think as well, that it could actually really differently happen. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so upset. If you need to feed it, don't worry, I'll move the camera and you can do your thing and I'll talk to the camera. But essentially, you did talk about belief last time and it yeah. is the biggest boundary I have with the clients that really take longer to get pregnant. It's the fact that they just don't, don't believe, believe they can. Yeah. And you have to but hear lots of different stories. Me. Yeah, it was really massive for me, I think. Because when you've obviously been told all these this, the bad news and obviously the bad things happen, you know, with fail cycles and then to then kind of actually believe, you know, that it actually is happening. You almost don't want to set yourself up for disappointment. Yeah. Oh, sweetness. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, yeah, so you don't want to set yourself up for disappointment, so you kind of try and play on not being too yeah. hopeful. Yeah. But that doesn't really help because you want to get into the state of believing it's possible yeah. and actually acting yeah. as though you're pregnant, yeah. which there's a part of your brain, which is the conditioned part, that says... Um, sorry, we're just, just going to the up camera. And, yeah, yeah just... there we go. We're good. Um, so yeah, the condition part that basically says, yeah, no, it's never going to happen. Why should it happen to you? It, you know, it, it doesn't happen. Don't be silly. You're going to set yourself up for a fall. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Hello, gorgeous. So yeah. lovely to meet this little person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've been waiting for her for so long. But this is one of the key things to sort of understand is that Despina did some very deep work. She did um, the Conceive With Ease course, which was a 13-week program with me, which included um, some very deep emotional mental detox to clear fear, to clear anxiety, to clear memories of pain, to clear issues around our yeah. femininity and the, the masculine well. and the wars, which were a big thing. <laughs> Initially, people think I'm a little bit mad around this stuff, but then when the stories start to come out, so through cellular memory and through dreams and, and all the rest of it. Do you remember the dream that I had as well before she was born? You tell them. Yeah, well, I think it was. Um, was it? I think it was on the Wednesday. She was born on the Saturday. I had a dream, literally, that my husband was um, kind of a soldier, and we were separated in the war, and that is actually what happened to my nan. So it was just, and you know, yeah, it was just. So, yeah, and obviously I spoke to you, Rosie, and you said, obviously, it was about kind of wanting, her wanting me to deal with it. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so we carry cellular memory um, of, of previous generations and unhealed trauma, and this is so relevant to the day after, you know, a hundred years since the First mm -hmm. World War ended. Like, this is phenomenal, and well, I, I just wish I could let people know more that this is not something that's just like an idea. It's very real, and it affects us very, very deeply. Hello, everybody. Um, because if we have unprocessed trauma in our cellular memory, which we all do, because, you know, we were all affected by the world wars and, you know, that kind of first world war ending and it was horrendous and barbaric and everybody lost loved ones and husbands and, you know, we're pregnant and our partners don't come home and separated. As you say, I mean, just to think about it chokes me up. And then a war ends and it's like the elation and the joy of that and of needing to rebuild a whole planet, really. And then another one hits. Yeah. So, you know, you can tie back into this idea of like, don't get too hopeful. There's always something terrible coming around the corner. I was talking in my yoga classes today about that and about how, you know, we kind of carry this anxiety in the back of our minds that we don't even realise we're carrying so much yeah. of the time. So when we talk about stress, we recognise that stress is a normal part of life. But we also recognise that f for many of us, we can just not feel safe to get pregnant until we have really cleared trauma. And sometimes we get pregnant by accident, and that's like taking us by surprise. But then we don't get pregnant again because there are things to heal. And if you're not prepared to go there and just witness yourself and what you've gone through then it's very difficult mm. to feel safe. There's a block. It's like the gateway of life, the cervix. We can't let anything in if we haven't let out the stuff that we've been holding. Now, again, how this relates... Mm. Is that door going? That's just an alarm. Okay. Yeah, so the, the way that this relates is once your baby has been born, you're obviously terrified of something happening mm. to your baby. And, you know, we've had to kind of... You've had to mix feed for a while, haven't you? Yeah. Because she's needed to put her birth weight back on and she's got there at last. But... You've not felt so comfortable co-sleeping and, you know, 
again these are anxieties we have to meet every mum and dad where they're at and we know that 90 percent of the planet co-sleeps with their baby but if the idea absolutely terrifies you <laughs> then you know you're not going to be able to relax and co-sleep with your baby mm -hmm. So some of the things you've found that have helped have been white noise. Yeah, white yeah. noise. Um, and we've also got like a co-sleeper kind of cot bed. Co-sleeper, so, so it's right... Yeah, so it's right kind of on the edge of the bed, attached to the bed. Um, and then literally I make sure that I'm at eye level with her so I can see her and I sleep at the same sort of level. And quite often I'll put my hands all over her and I hold her and I hug her. And, you just lay there sometimes and smile at me so it's yeah it's lovely so you just, found yeah. finding your way yeah and we also talked about using a, a, a dummy a pacifier mm -hmm. which people have very strong opinions the, about mainly for the colic yeah it really helps to soothe her and this is the thing is about understanding that there are fashions but ultimately what's important is that you understand why a child needs to, to do the self-soothing with the mouth and mm -hmm. that's what it comes to we're all born um, premature. We're born with a, a premature digestive tract. And if we have any drugs in labour, which you had mm, to have, yeah. didn't you, then that's going to take some time to leave our body. Mm. And, you know, homeopathy and um, also a very high-grade essential oils can be very helpful for working with colic and mm. working with clearing the toxins from the body. But essentially, ev there is always help if we can kind of just work out what's going on. And the main thing is to create a sense of safety, both for baby and for mum. And what I explain time and again is if a baby has grown inside you, hearing your heartbeat, which they do hear, <laughs> and your digestive tract and the fluid around them and uh, your breathing rhythm, then they're not going to feel very safe outside of you and kind of separate because they need that skin to skin she to loves, regulate. Yeah, she loves to sort of be with me and on me, and, you know, or Pedro. She loves to be near us and with yeah. us. And, you know, if I put her down, sort of, she'll start crying. So I've, that's why I've been experimenting with the, slip, the wraps thing as well. And just that's right, you've got to wrap around sling. Yeah, just and getting the hang of it. <laughs> but you've found, so, I mean, there have been things that just, have triggered anxiety for you, like yeah. just simple things like that, yeah. right? In terms yeah. of... How do you get about? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, just things that I never really thought about. And, you know, it's even like when I've obviously got home and she's upset and with the colic and stuff like that, how do I go to the toilet? So I've kind of been quite good at holding her and going to the toilet. Holding <laughs> her and going to the toilet. When do you, when do you brush your teeth? When yeah, do you have, have a shower? shower right? Yeah. And how has it been making being lunch, at home? Making lunch. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been, it's been all right. Um, I mean, I've been trying to sort of, you know, see people and do stuff and, because um, when you're used to kind of being out, obviously working and having lots of adult company, and then you don't have it anymore, it does take a little bit of getting used to. But it's like whenever you know, and especially when she had quite a, and there'd be some, there's been a few days when she's just been screaming the whole day. Yeah. Cause she's obviously been in a lot of pain and stuff. So. And how um, does that make you feel? Uh, it when makes she's me feel sad day? for her because obviously, you know, as a parent, obviously you just want to take the pain away from them. But um, you know, I think having obviously having a chat with you, you know, babies cry. I just have to accept that babies cry and. You know, I just have to try my best, obviously, just to make her as comfortable as I can. Yeah. Um, you know, and th things like having, like, yesterday when she was she was quite upset, so I put the sleep on, managed to do it yesterday, well <laughs> and put her in it, and I was able to do stuff, and she was asleep, you know, on me. So, it's, you know, just trying to sort of experiment with different things, and also obviously talking to other parents as well to get their advice and what they, you know, what worked for them, and obviously trying different things, really to find what works for yeah, you yeah to what works well more for her, the baby as well so and to keep your sanity as well so hence with, with a dummy because I was really anti-dummy beforehand and um, I was really wasn't keen on using a dummy but you know as soon as we gave her one it was just like she was a different baby yeah and that, so, you know desperate times desperate vision <laughs> well it's just sort of opening your mind a little bit as well and sort of you know not kind of that takes us back to mm. beliefs, you know, this is this whole thing about belief, belief I can't get pregnant, belief that it's going to be difficult for me because it was difficult for my mum, belief that it's not possible because I've got, en I've got endometriosis or I've got this or I've got that or, you know, there's all these things that come in the way of belief and it's like being able to trust yourself, being able to challenge your beliefs, being able to sort of ask yourself, well, I've, are my beliefs really serving me right now? Am I getting what I want right now? Because you can have beautiful beliefs, but if they're not materialising in life experiences yeah. that you want to have, then challenging them is important. And again, again, this whole cellular thing is so important because we're left with these unprocessed feelings. And when you have a little one that you just so desperately love and care for and want to just do right by them and you're terrified about anything causing them pain or suffering... 
so much of that is about us being able to make peace with our own suffering to make peace with our own challenging emotions that often means reparenting ourselves and that was the process that Lespina went through as well was shifting the voices in her head her inner masculine her inner feminine and understanding her own inner wounds and we're not talking about perfection here are we we're not talking about no. suddenly everything no. was perfect and you got pregnant no. it was just about the willingness to go on the journey no. and, and women at home post-birth can often really drop into a slump no. especially if you've wanted a baby no. for so long no. And suddenly the, the flowers are all dead and the cards have been up a while and everyone's <laughs> gone and done that initial visit and they're all busy and they don't understand that for you just trying to make lunch, like you yeah, said, with the babies, You know, it's all these little things like making breakfast and making lunch. It's, you know, it's surprising. But I've been trying to sort of go out, um, you know, like for walks and I've seen meet, meet people that are also mums and that are off just to sort of, you know, go and see my parents, just to sort of do things. But it's like, you know, whatever, however kind of almost... You know, when she's really upset and she's screaming and it's like, you know, I just look at her and I think how lucky I am to have her. So You think how lucky yeah, you are to yeah. have her. And that's that's your mindset shift. This is what's so great about your ability to kind of shift it round. Because often we'll just feel like we're failing as parents and it's very common yeah. to feel like you're not doing a good enough job because you're not able to, to pacify your child. And we talked about the pre cries, so we're trying to bring in a few things here that mm -hmm. help, but like understanding the pre cries of a baby um, and the baby cues and the well. baby cues just help you know when they're getting overstimulated and when to move them away from mm. well-meaning friends and relatives and the sounds as well I found really helpful you know the uh, air and the hay and the so the, yeah and the, those are the pre the pre yeah, cries yeah, right yeah. so being able to sort of tell what cry is coming as a result of the the bit before the actual crying mm. um, I mean this all means of us slowing down to meet the pace of the baby. Mm. And it does mean being at home. Yeah, and it does take time as well, you know, yeah. sort of because, you know, even just sort of getting used to sort of all the noises that she's making and the cues that she's making because obviously every baby's different. Yeah. You know, every baby's going to be the same. So, you know, and sometimes even like she'll get herself so irate, it's like trying to really put her on the breast is hard. Yeah. And calming babies yeah. down before you put them on the breast yeah. is a really good idea. Yeah. But this is the expert. This lady is the expert on this baby. And the point is, these two have never met consciously mm. as far as memory allows before and we go to the midwife we go to the health visitor we go to the pediatrician we go to our parents we go to our friends and all we can do is hear things and then see what works for mm. us but one thing I wanted to ask you because we talked about stress incontinence we talked about closing the stomach muscles yeah. you know these are totally common things that happen post birth is that we need to strengthen our pelvic floor we need to close our body back up after birth and fill the space our baby grow, grew in so have you missed your bump um i did sort of um, for the first few days it was just very strange i didn't miss it it was just very strange i think okay. but then kind of having her there it was just like again i couldn't believe that she was really there so would you say you're generally bathing in bliss as an afterthought yeah, I did, yeah. yeah definitely are there any more challenging emotions that have come up for you that maybe are ones you recognize from before even being pregnant that are just um, there with you not so much about obviously her and you know obviously you know I've got other issues from my family and whatever my dad but yeah nothing really with her I don't think so no. so one of the things I've picked up with Espina and it's important to share with you and we will bring this video to close in a sec is that known her knowing her for many years and being I'm an intuitive empath myself I could see that she was a sponge for the negative emotions of the people around her and because she cares so much for people and for well you're just a caring person the people closest to us without meaning to can really often just energetically offload on us and we out of love take that on and one of the things I felt was so acutely strong for Thespina was that the pain she was carrying in her cellular memory was not hers it was not your direct experience mm. but you kept having this experience of loss mm. of seeking something and then not having it in order to be able to process those feelings didn't you and it was like this grief that is unhealed in us it's so prevalent and it's so apt that we're dealing with Remembrance Day at the moment so I'm urging all want-to-be parents to recognise that we all have post-World War <laughs> trauma in our cellular memory. We all have stories and that healing that and clearing that is important. Mm. Um, final thoughts, anything you want to share? I mean, how, how do you feel the Conceive With Ease programme prepared you 
for being here right now? Um, I think it just, like I sort of said previously, it just gave me the really, really, um, and just sort of changed my perspective and um, just I feel like I'm much more grateful and, you know, I think also the fearless one as well, kind of. Was you did both, both didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So just, yeah, just made me feel, just changed my perspective and kind of, you know, made me more kind of grateful of what I did do have rather than worrying about what I didn't have and... You shifted your perspective yeah, in that yeah. respect, but you were able to stick at it because yeah. you'd done the deeper because, subconscious yeah, reprogramming. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I kind of yeah, and then I sort of obviously kept the belief that it would happen sort of when it was meant to in the whole divine timing. So. The belief that it will happen when it's meant to in the whole divine timing, and that means even when our moon time or our period comes every month, that we're able to hold that space that it's okay. My body knows what it's doing, and the right time it's mm. going to come. Mm. So. Um, we're doing an amazing job here, aren't we? I mean, you've got a lovely, calm baby who's growing into herself, and you're a lovely mummy. I'm so glad I'm sitting here with you after all these years of knowing <laughs> you, because I've known you a really yeah. long time, haven't I? Yeah. And to yeah. see you go through the work and to trust it and to mm. try things and not give up mm. and to dig deep, because yeah. it was deeper than I think you would have looked otherwise. Yeah, much deeper. And, yeah. You know, they're not giving up as well, I think, and sort of also changing kind of my perspective on kind of life and health and food and you know made such a difference you know kind of you know just for my future health as well as kind of having a baby so spot on spot on and the one thing I've noticed for you throughout your pregnancy and post is you've got color in your cheeks whereas um there's been a you used to be quite quite gray more sallow before and you've Mm -hmm. really like just through making these changes and You know, one of the things we do cover on the course is um, thinking about the nest, thinking about the space that Mm. the baby's coming into and even having conversations with your partner, because I I, I send a list of questions as part of the course, to kind of consider, you know, how, what your ideas are around bringing babies up and and actually where you agree and where you don't and how you then go deeper into it and um, find your answers so that you can create some harmony because when you have very different ideas so maybe when one's a lot more green or open-minded or hippie than the other mm-hmm. and you know there, there are conflicts that aren't really addressed because there's the fear of creating one mm-hmm. argument after another but when you know your starting position and then we have so much research now to support us to make decisions that are right for us and a book that I'm a huge advocate of is What Every Parent Needs to Know by Margot Sunderland which I lent you didn't I to yeah. have a look at and I think everyone should read that before they even fall pregnant because it kind of gets you to think about the way you were parented, maybe the way you deal with trauma and pain and uncomfortable feelings. And to think, is the headspace I have inside of me one I want my child to inherit? And if it isn't, then the work is so important to do ahead of time mm. because you, you want to know that you're downloading the, the perception of life that is one you'd like to pass on. So I think we'll leave it there. Any final thoughts for parents to be in the mm, making? No. Just enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it. And there is a joy to slowing yeah. down, isn't there? Yeah. And and just being with your baby and getting to know them. Have you been feeling lonely? Um no. 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 I mean I've missed the about the adult company a little bit. But um I wouldn't say I've sort of sort of felt lonely because I've just obviously got her and kind of getting to know her, so No one can it's describe been... what it's like to be in love with your baby, <laughs> can they? It's like it's a... Uh, when two Just parents are in love with their mm. baby, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Someone tried to call us. Anyway, we will leave it there, and I'm going to just keep looking at, Chris, at Christina. But if you'd like to know more about the Conceive With Ease course, or even I'm going to be putting some other videos out around um, being older and the repercussions of pregnancy, and also when we've had miscarriages. Um, how do we overcome the fear of things going wrong in the next pregnancy when a pregnancy sticks because you want to have tools to be able to deal with that rather than to spend a whole pregnancy in high stress anxiety Um, and this is the kind of work that we're talking about that I offer so uh, watch this space this week and next week and the whole of this month because it's baby making time (laughs) (laughs) lots of love for now take care